I'm Mr. Johnny and I'm going to be linking the audio first parts of these videos in the link in, in the description down below. I'm not saying these combat companies are doing a bad job, I'm just saying them need to do a better job to get their players back as bad than in manga. And at the time of recording of this video, oh they have done some terrible mistakes and really stupid things, but they have been doing better and they have started to get their groove back. I'm just saying how they can do it even better. I think DC and Marvel are just as good as each other, and I like both Marvel and DC equally. Marvel and DC are good, they just go in different ways. It's it being in like an alternate universe version of each other. Frankly, they're both better than each other, and because of them keep it being better than each other, they keep it doing it at the same time and keep getting better in general. That's why they're the best comic book companies, and why IGC and Marvel has the best crossovers in comic book history. I'm just personally more of a DC fan, and a lot of people like DC better. Because it focuses more on them fighting against villains instead of other superheroes. And DC superheroes are someone you inspire to be and role models for people instead of relatable superheroes like the Marvel superheroes. And DC has a timeless feeling that lets you do it in any point of time, while well, Marvel oh, it stays with the margin in log, uh, which makes it for that specific time specifically. And you can't blame because it's that specific time, so you're still enjoying it at that at time in the future. And Marvel is dark because of it, it being realistic with how it's dark, but DC is more uh, dark because of it focusing on dark and serious things in general, instead of it just focusing on unrealistic dark and serious things. It's also good DC focuses more on fantastical things which is good for a storyline so you doing the infinite possibilities of it and it being anything. And you focusing on the symbol of superheroes and the idea of things in general. It also lets you focus on bigger scale things. And you also focusing on stuff that's better than just a robbery. It is also good DC honoring their golden age because of them showing how good it is while Marvel doesn't have a golden age so that's why they don't honor that. And well, Marvel and DC characters die more often because they want to copy the Death of Superman thing. thing but DC doesn't need to do that because they created it and it's good and their characters not dying so much in their continuity and being brought back to life because of it. DC is doing good with focusing on their legacy superheroes and it's good the Teen Titans getting their time to sign in the DC comic books. They just need to focus is on making their original superheroes good and there are some things you just shouldn't do in DC comic books. And they definitely shouldn't be doing this terrible fan fiction in the actual continuity of DC comic books. It's good DC letting their writers do what they want with it and it's also good DC not firing their writers for these things. But they definitely shouldn't do anything that's too big of a risk in DC and they should just say no to some of this stuff and stop the writers from doing it and just make sure the writers don't do this anymore. But they're not only firing them if they do it, but also blacklisting them so that the combat companies don't get them. With them only doing some of the things that the writers want, but only with it being a good idea. Like for example, you shouldn't kill off those things by giving a cancer. Then have Sherman fall in love with another alien green lantern. And you also shouldn't reveal Superman's identity to the rest of the world. But it would be a good idea if Damian Wayne finally stopped being a jerk face and became a good kid. And then him actually being honored that his brother made him a Robin and him also oh, just as like and, and having a family again. And John Kidd becoming a teenager is a good idea, they just did it in a bad way. Like if he became a young teenager uh, that's still a little older teenager with Damian Wayne, it would be good. Like if you did it him like how they originally made him a teenager with the personality from the DC deceased teenage version of him, and you combine both of their costumes into one, it would be good. Because then he would be a good person like his barber Superman, he would just be a more peace loving person than Superman. And who knows when you need to fight. It also wouldn't hurt if these DC characters got their happy endings before you rebooted them in the next comic book series is continuity. Are you just showing and us as and us enjoying and them having their happy endings in the new continuity? You're also using the idea sidekicks and the superior families and you're also using the Teen Titans to do 
whom I think the Redemption's DC is known for their sidekicks, you should also focus on the lesser known members is of the DC e comics, but also you focusing more on the main members of DC comic books, superheroes and supervillains. It would also be good if more of them ended up in Iron Thrones media, since DC is known for their cartoon shows, and their cartoon shows is how people all found out about these guys. People grew up with these DC cartoon shows, and them being a big part of why so many people are DC comic book fans. DC will do better movies than Marvel because of the DCU, and because of the new DC live action movie universe. Yes, and Marvel has good cartoon shows, DC just does a bad job with the cartoon shows. Because of them doing different versions of the cartoon shows, so if you don't like it, like one of the versions of them, you can just see them in another version. Because DC knows they have the infinite, unlimited potential of animation. You can do anything in animation, but in live action you can't do anything. DC just knows that animation is a form of storytelling that is an artwork that should be respected. And like with comic books, like and with video games and live action movies. And people don't know this, so not only are they missing the point, but them also being terrible at it. And they should know this, because as to be true, you know, it's you're the one who's living in a nightmare world, making reality worse than it actually is, is by not knowing this, is, and by not admitting it. Don't blame us because you won't own up to your mistakes. Oh hey, if people do know this, then it's good them knowing what a good story is, and them knowing... And, and that it's good to be entertained, and you also knowing that just because you get older doesn't mean you ever stop being you. And you also need to keep your childhood innocent since it's the only way you can ever truly be yourself. And the good kind of person that you want to be and that, that you should be. And it's good DC taking a break from doing the big events for a while, they just need to do it further to longer than only do a big event on occasion every few years. And really, comic books in general should do that. And focus on doing more one shot at stories and for the superheroes and supervillain ends and characters specifically. And only them doing a big deal and doing a big event and, and a good way to change it up and to do more things with it is if they did crossovers with an idea, a comic book company and, and if they did a the big event and for a summer event. And people would be glad to see it, especially with their having iPhones and media of it coming out. And also, are you doing it a holiday thing, so it being more original and it being good for that specific holiday, like Halloween, being for Halloween, and, and a Christmas special for Christmas. It is good DC doing it, and it is good when DC did that. Some comic book writers said it would be a good idea to get new people into comic books and for the original DC comic book writers to come back. But really, what they should do is to get more people who are comic book fans to do comic books. The fans from the internet. Who do videos like Mr. Rogues. And Captain Midnight. They actually did do comic books themselves and they were awesome. And this does give people hope that they can do their own comic books. It is good knowing and that I could do my own comic books because of people like them doing it. So because of them already doing their own comic books, it would be good if DC and Marvel got them as comic book writers. It's because since they're such big fans of them, and they would also do a good job doing the comic books. This would also help DC and Marvel to show that they care about the fans and be good to their creators. And if these guys manage to do their comic books without a big company backing them up, just think what they can do with the resources of DC comic books and, and company. And use as a whole. With them also getting in comic book fans as comic book writers in general, or either by uh, messaging them on their Patreon from their YouTube videos, or to see if they're good. And DC just sending the money through their Patreon and then them mailing in, in by email all the stuff they do for DC to DC. Uh, so them working from home and DC doing this stuff from their part of the world. DC getting their comic book writers and their best comic book writers to look out for these guys and to get these guys as comic book writers who are comic book fans. You don't need to do it with these YouTubers and you don't need to get it from YouTubers specifically. You just need to get it with anyone who is a comic book fan and any comic book writers who are a fan of these characters specifically. And actual comic book fans, true comic book fans, people who know the reasons why everyone loves these characters. Guys who know the metaphorical aspects of these superheroes, what these superheroes represent, what these superhero 
us mean to them and the fans. But these superheroes symbolically mean in, in general. The symbolism and the symbolicness of the idea of these superheroes true meaning and the reason and of why and the reason why these superheroes are so iconic because of the idea of them. Them just being good superheroes yes, and them just being in good people in general. He sees more modern comic book writers and the original best comic book writers is also mentor the new comic book writers. And show them how to do good stories in comic books, so them passing down the mantle and so there will always be good comic book writers in the future. Just because you see a character at the end of their journey doesn't mean there's now no more stories to tell with them. In fact, that actually means you get to see these characters as with everything that we like about them and them just doing their thing. Them just continuing on with their story. Them just not making the same mistakes as before because of them and finding out from it. So you should also do the DC characters start making the same mistakes that they did before. So there would be no character regressing and them just growing as characters. Them just being free from characters now. And with them still having a personality, them just being perfect because we saw their hero's journey. And now they overcame their own demons. So them just becoming the best version of themselves. And you should also have the last known members of the Supio families and the last known members of the Supio's Rose Galleries is so up more just with the main Supio family members as being showing up even more than them with the superheroes villains and his most iconic ones. And when you create your own character in cartoons or in comic books or in general, you need to create you need to see it as you being a god of these characters, but you also seeing them as your kids. If you also doing and what you would do in this situation, but also like an ideal version of you or an ideal person and with a personality, or if they they had this ideal personality for you to do or them acting off of. I'm not saying everyone should do this or you should do this when you're creating a character. You should just use this as for your character not doing anything bad or for things he's not getting too crazy in a comic book. Like it only being comic book crazy that it could happen, not real life not it being crazy in real life. I have like it's never going to happen. With you getting it to make as much sense as possible and you only doing and you stretching your belief, not you you need to search to believe a bunch of that for it to happen. And it's still not happening. But it not making sense in the first place. Also, you should just do your character doesn't do the stupid decision in the first place. Hey, that's a plot hole. And that your character is an unlikable drag face in the first place. is or an idiot. It or a useless guy. You need to do these characters as likable and a reason for these people or to like them. Um, it's not just for you, you're also doing it for the fans. You, it is good in a comic book writer liking what he does, but you need to make both kinds of them happy. With You also need to know uh, when and to do what the fans want and when to do you know, something that you would like with the story. And you definitely need to make sure they're not being plot holes in the first place, or at least just you think in the plot holes. It's bad and creators getting mad at us just for noticing these plot holes. But I do think they shouldn't be so nitpicky and constantly point out every plot hole that aren't even plot holes or uh, in some forms of media. Like the story is still good, it's a simple story. Hey, and to be true, if you're doing these things out of nowhere, then why don't you just make up a reason in, in your head for why it happened that easily could happen in the movie. Hey, because as, as there's nothing there that says it not being there. I mean... And that's what I do when I see these things, and a bunch of the time it just being explained later on in the movie sequels, or uh, in the movie themselves too. And it could already be there, them just not mentioning it. Because it's good them focusing on sewing, not telling, and it is also good and it being so simple, they're not really needing to mention it. Like for example, they kind of nitpicked the original Disney movies to death, even though them being better than the uh, LAJ modern Disney movies. There are some good modern Disney movies, but a bunch of them being bad, and it definitely doesn't mean that the original Disney movies aren't good too, you know. Because not only were they the original Disney movies, they were also the original all good Disney movies. For stuff like Scooby-Doo, it is good them having the meta-humor there, uh, and it is also good them not doing nothing but the meta-humor there. Uh, but they also acknowledge how good the 
and it am doing those things in the Scooby Doo universe, so it not making fun of the fans for it. And because the Scooby Doo universe is different from the IJ cartoon universes, that's why it making sense there. If the source formula is good, you should understand it and, and like it if it's good. But if it's not good, like if it's base, is an idiot, and not just someone who's not too bright, but an actual idiot or a drag face, then you should hate it because of it being bad and because it being based on something bad. But you need to see some shows with different understandings with what they're trying to do. You know, and the other good things that you get out of these ones, like for example, it taking advantage of it doing in action and good storytelling, and with it also being in Brian Hopeful yet also dark and serious. Right, it just having good enemies and it and it focusing in and it being entertaining and it also focusing in on it taking advantage of it being enemies and, and they also are doing good and metaphorical aspects of it. I can't understand and why there is controversy sometimes and the re and there is controversy sometimes for a reason, but some things are just definitively bad and some things are just definitively good. And you really shouldn't point, constantly point out the things that are good and what's wrong with them. If anything, you should be doing it with the bad things because they are already bad. The only thing that really matters in it if, is if it's entertaining. That's what every creator should do when they ask themselves, is this entertaining? If they do it in an entertaining way, it's good. As long as they know to make it entertaining thing for people, then they're a good creator. But if they don't, then it's a, they're a terrible creator. And if it isn't, it's bad. But if it happened to just hating something if it's bad and just liking something if it's good. And DC does need to do their sidekicks ending up in more other forms of media and doing more things with them in the comic books. Either uh, with the sidekicks of the superheroes that already exist or with new superheroes and their new sidekicks. It would be good the other sidekicks ending up in other forms of media uh, like the live action movies. Yes, it would be good at what it is good that Robin is showing up in the Batman 2, you know, because I wasn't wanting it. For them doing the Dick Grayson Robin White and the story of Robin in general right. And for them doing the Bat Family in general, it's good us getting that in the DCU. You know, and for them to do Damien Wayne's Robin right there. And it would be good them doing the Teen Titans in the DCU because James Gunn and his fan DC comics, so it could happen and he would be able to do it good. And you would also need to do someone like the Flash getting in his psychic and then doing the story of Kid Flash right, right in the new DC live action movie universe because Kid Flash is one of the most iconic sidekicks and it is good you doing in the sidekick storyline right, with the Flash becoming a mentor to his sidekick Kid Flash and Young Justice should continue on and forever because that's what the great Jake Regard Grisman wants from it and you would all be glad for it because of it being a good superhero for the media and a good cartoon show for the media in general and it would be good for James Gunn's DCU and it should at least come back for its fifth season for them to be able to end it goodly and because of the fans wanting it and if Young Justice can come back like and the X-Men and uh, animated series can come back for X-Men 97 and then and Teen Titans could, should come back and could come back like, for a sixth season. We have been wanting this for a while, so not only could they bring back Teen Titans for a sixth season, but they should do it in order for it to go out with a bang. For it to go out with a bang. Plus, a bunch of the idea Superior cartoon shows could come back too. And you're also doing an idea Superior shows coming back too. You know, I already have some videos coming up for Superior and Amazing. And, and for ID and cancel old stuff from superheroes in general, so stay tuned for that. And I'll leave a link to Mr. Rogues and Captain Midnight's comic books and YouTube channels in the description down below. And it would be good DC using this continuity if them just showing the original parts of the continuity when they bring it up. Up in a flashback, like and with them actually saying it in the storyline. And them also are showing these guys and these showing these guys in the flashback, like when they do do that. So these guys won't need to read the other comic books and they'll be quickly caught up with these comic books. And so it being good for the original readers is them also seeing this stuff in the comic books again. Plus DC villains are better than Marvel villains. And it's because of there being more pure evil ones and yet also sympathetic ones and them doing the job of a villain and being an arch is better than the Marvel villains. DC heroes are more iconic than the Marvel heroes because of them being role models and someone who inspires us to do bad here. 
And everyone knows who Batman Superman is, and so not as many people know about Iron Man Spider-Man. Plus, it also being because of them being around longer, is why I and people already knowing about Batman Superman. DC should also just undo all the terrible things they did to the superheroes recently, and just get all that stuff out of continuity, and just do the superheroes good again and not doing these terrible things to them anymore. You could just say hey, it was because of mind control and because of a side effect from either superheroes and supervillains, and also because of some other sleep sifters, and because of Mr. Mixer's product and doing a joke on the DC universe. <laughs> How dare you! Then you leave me no choice. I'm not afraid of you. I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Oh, so fast. But do I gotta kiss your cat? You said you'd do anything for me. I can't. I can't take this anymore. No woman can take me. I'm a wild animal who, uh, lives wild. Elena, I'm sorry, but I gotta roam free. You're breaking up with me? You see, if you can't love yourself, your wild, wild self, then you can't, uh, go out with some chick who doesn't understand your wildness. We'll always have double-handed nose-picking. Oh, and I'm taking some cookies. <laughs> I'm stuck without a punchline. Uh -oh. Okay. I give up. I surrendered already. Tell her, Batman. Andrea, you've got to get out of here. The place is wired to explode. No. One way or another, it ends tonight. Goodbye, my love. to be saved, sir. Vengeance blackens the soul, Bruce. I always feared you would become that which you fought against. You walk the edge of that abyss every night. But you haven't fallen in, and I thank heaven for that. But Andrea fell into that pit years ago. And no one, not even you, could have pulled her back.
Sonia? I've got you. Maybe I should write the report this time, huh, Bullock? Rocky! Kevin! <laughs> Kevin! Oh, Kevin. Voila. About time I returned this. What are you doing here? Funny thing. This morning I got up thinking something's wrong. And then I realized no gunfire, no explosions, no goons out to do me in. Everything was peaceful and quiet. And that's when I realized how much I missed you. You poor thing. But that was the old Kathy Duquesne. The new one is different. She intends to live a life of complete respectability. All the time? Afraid so. Well, maybe an explosion now and then. Where's the Joker? Joker? Drop the act. I know you're working with him. Uh, no, Joker's gone. I don't know where he is, really. The suit sensors aren't picking up any pulse fluctuations. He's telling the truth. Oh, God. I killed him. I didn't mean to. I tried so hard to forget, but I still hear the shot. Still see his dead smile. Every night the dreams get stronger. He's there when I sleep, whispering, laughing, telling me I'm just as bad as he is. We're both the same. I'm calling an ambulance. No, I'm all right. Forgive me, Terry. How do you know my name? There's nothing about you I don't know, bat fake. <laughs> exterior lies the mind of a genius years ahead of my time in the weeks young Robin was under my tutelage I used him as the subject of my greatest experiment utilizing cutting-edge genetics technology which I had pinched here and there I encoded my DNA on a microchip and set it into bird boys bird brain here Everything that was me has been asleep and all comfy and cozy inside Tim Drake's subconscious. At first, I had to limit the time I spent in Drake's body. He's not aware of what I do, chalking up any lingering memories to bad dreams. If his family misses him, I simply call wifey and tell her, I'm working late, honey. The changes come at will now, and soon I'll be strong enough to live in this body permanently. Yeah. Sick him. Ace, here. Attaboy. That's about your speed. Let's dance, bozo. Joker's vain and likes to talk. He'll try to distract you, but don't listen. Block it out and power on through. Wait. I like to talk, too. What are you doing? Fighting dirty. The real Batman would never... Told you you didn't know me. Can't say the same for you. Impudent brat. Who do you think you're talking to? Not a comedian, I'll tell you that. Shut your mouth! 
The real Batman never talked to you much, did he? That's probably why you were so fixated on him. Don't play psychoanalyst with me, boy. Oh, I don't need a degree to figure you out. The real reason you kept coming back was you never got a laugh out of the old man. I'm not hearing this. Get a clue, clowny. He's got no sense of humor. He wouldn't know a good joke if it bit him in the cape. Not that you ever had a good joke. Shut up. Shut up! I mean, joy buzzers, squirting flowers, lame. Where's the A material? Make a face, drop your pants, something! Show yourself! You make me laugh. But only because I think you're kind of pathetic. <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> so you fell in a tank of acid, got your skin bleached, then decided to become a supervillain. What? You couldn't get work as a rodeo clown? <laughs> Don't you dare laugh at me! <laughs> Why? I thought the Joker always wanted to make Batman laugh! <laughs> You're not Batman! <laughs> I've got you. Way ahead of you, Mutt. Just like a sandwich. Sandwich, sandwich Looking at you now Walking down this hall Hand in hand Which <laughs> There's a hunger deep inside Let us look into each other's eyes Catch up on all the things we're dreaming of Stack a little love and tenderness In between you and I A sandwich of love Girl, dry your tears or hold you like You were a sandwich I will send you the bill Just call my name, you know I'll do All I can, which There's a hunger deep inside Let us look into each other's eyes Catch up on all the things we're dreaming of Stack a little love and tenderness In between you and I Where you all good? That's how we'll make a sandwich of love 
Let's go! 